Oh, good day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I just wanted to uh, do this video here, which is a follow on from the one just prior, which was making up this little RF amplifier for the front end of the double sideband rig. So, I just want to get, um, spend this video going through the approach I took uh, for its design um, and then what I did for the testing. Um, so, if I just reposition the camera here, we'll just look down here. So, and what we might be able to do is do a bit of zoom up. Okay, so um, the approach I took was to have a bit of a look through um, the solid state design for the radio amateur again and just have a bit of a look at what they were talking about in regards to uh, RF amplifiers and BJTs, certainly for the front end. Um, and the approach they took and what they talked about was a bit better. Um, was using, uh, if you're going to use a BJT, to use a little bit of negative feedback and um, set the quiescent current for for 20 milliamps. So that's what I did for this one. So I've got 20 milliamps quiescent current going through here um, and I'm going to use a little bit of uh, negative feedback uh, in, the emitter, in the emitter circuit here. So the DC biasing will come up with an overall resistance that needs to be uh, in the emitter and then I'm going to bypass a portion of that with a 100 nanofarad capacitor um, to create a, a little bit of negative feedback over the non-bypassed portion just here. Now from the spec sheet uh, at 20 milliamps you don't get an exact figure for minimum and maximum for HFE to work out our beta DC but uh, by sort of uh, screwing your eyes up a little bit and looking between the values um, I've come up with um, 80 for minimum and 300 for maximum uh, and in line with some of the guidance that comes out in SSDRA and the uh, experimental experimental methods for RF design um, I'm going to use uh, the geometric mean um, as the approach in other words uh, the square root of the minimum times the maximum that comes out at 154 so uh, that's what I'll use there. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details there because it probably make this video a little bit too long. So um, I'll just say that once again I'm going to set the uh, emitter resistance to be 1.2 volts, uh, which is a tenth of our VCC. Um, and like I say, 20 milliamps through it comes out with 60 ohms. I've got a big star there, which we'll see later on as I've split that into two. Um, R1, same as approach we've seen before. Um, our emitter voltage plus 0.7 comes out at 1.9 uh, we've talked about before uh, having a nice stiff voltage divider biasing so we want to have at least uh, 10 times the base current through this uh, leading up to our VCC uh, with 10 times passing through here and then with that additional base current coming out of the transistor uh, 11 times going through um, R2 uh, I'm also going to take into consideration just for, uh, for this time uh, is the voltage drop across this 100 ohm resistor it's relatively high as opposed to say 10 ohms so uh, there's an appreciable voltage drop across that uh, in this particular case at 20 milliamps of 2 volts um, so I'm going to take that into consideration too when working out what the voltage is here in order to work out what R1 is so if you just run through that uh, we know again that um, our base current equals our collector current divided by beta DC um, and we know that our emitter current is, is, is approximately to our collector current. The only difference between the two is uh, a, the base current, which is you know down there in the microamps. So we can then just work out our base current by going our emitter current divided by our beta DC. Right. Um, so again, as we've seen in the past, um, Ohm's law to work out our value of R2 comes out at 14.64. Uh, and I'm going to use a 1.5k ohm resistor there. Uh, for R1, you can see there I've got the 12 volts minus the voltage drop across that 100 ohm resistor minus the voltage at the base. Um, in the past, I'd made a mistake there transposing it, so it is 1.2 plus 0.7 equals 1.9 uh, divided by 11 times the base current comes out at 56.73. So I'm going to use a 5.6k ohm resistor for that. And then just for uh, completeness, I'm just going to double check. Uh, at 20 milliamps and I'm not going to exceed the power dissipation of our 100 ohm resistor and in the DC um, not going to exceed uh, the power dissipation of the of the uh, transistor 
So we know power equals I squared R, so 20 milliamps squared times 100 ohms equals 40 milliwatts, that's well less than the 250 milliwatts being a quarter watt resistor. And then for the transistor, uh, just working out what the voltage drop is on the actual transistor itself. So the voltage at the collector would be 12 volts minus the voltage across that 100 ohm resistor, minus uh, the 1.2 volts which is sitting on the emitter, so now we've got the voltage uh, across that device, VCE, um, and we can multiply that by 20 milliamps, it comes at 100 and, 176 milliwatts, so that's uh, that's well within the 600 odd for the um, for that particular device. Rightio, so, um, now, this little amplifier here is going to sit, uh, I think I mentioned it before but I'll say it again, uh, is going to sit on the output of the bandpass filter that um, is sitting between the, or just coming off the antenna. That bandpass filter is going to serve two purposes. It's going to be the receive bandpass filter, but also um, being a QRP rig, it's going to be sitting on the output of the PA. Um, but suffice to say, in terms of what it's expecting to see, it's expecting to see 50 ohms. So I need to make my RN uh, look like 50 ohms to that. Uh, and we know that R or Rn equals R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with beta AC times uh, little re plus re dash, where re dash is their unbypassed portion of re. Um, and we know that beta AC equals our uh, transition frequency for the device divided by our frequency of operation. So, eh, right or wrong, what I've decided to do for this one um, from the spec sheet. 300 megahertz divided by uh, 5.4 megs, so the happy medium between uh, 80 meters and 40 meters. Right or wrong? That's what I've done. Uh, and that comes out at 55.5. As we know before, uh, little re equals 26 divided by our emitter current in milliamps. Okay, so um, we can start to plug that in, and uh, before I do, I'll just mention that uh, re dash this value up here, um, I used 4.7. So I did a play around with LT Spice and then determined that um, 4.7 in series with the 56 ohm resistor, which is our bypassed portion of uh, RE, is about right. So uh, that's what I'm now going to use for the unbypassed um, RE. Plugging that all together and inserting our values of R1 and R2, our beta AC, little RE, we come out at 260 ohms. So now we've got that, we can then work out what the uh, transformers need to be for both the input and the output um, to meet our requirements. Right, so T1, our input transformer, what I've decided to do, it needs to go from 50 ohms to our 260 we just calculated. So N equals the square root of uh, those two resistances. Uh, it comes out at 2.28. Now, um, a, uh, at at 2.28, um, an integer value for the primary and secondary, uh, a close enough one, is 7 to 16. But I just want to make sure then, um, as we've seen before, that rule of thumb is we need to make sure that the smaller winding, so the 7 turn winding over here, its inductive reactance at the lowest frequency of operation, 3.5 megahertz, the inductive reactance is at least four to five times the resistance or the impedance hanging off it. Um, and we just said before that it's 50 ohms. So I need to be at least four to five times 50 ohms it needs to be its inductive reactance. Okay, so I just determined before that integer value was seven to 16, so I need to check that seven turn one. Um, if you go to an online calculator, the one I normally use, uh, seven turns on an FT37-43, which is the core I'm using, comes out at 17.15 microhenries. So now I can plug all my knowns into the inductive reactance formula. So 2 pi times 3.5 megs, the lowest frequency of operation, times our inductance, which we just determined from our seven turns on that particular core, comes out at 377. 377 divided by 50 equals 7.5. So I'm well in excess of that rule of thumb of four to five times. Big tick. Right, T2. T2 is going to be the um, the standard uh, matching 
uh, 50 ohms. So 50 ohms is going to be the mixer that comes after this particular amplifier. Uh, amplifier and I want to present to the collector 200 ohms. Um, so that's what I've done there. So n equals then the square root of 200 divided by 50 equals 2. Um, right, 2. Now I've got, a, I've got a rough guess it's going to come out at 12 to 6 because this is the particular values that I've used in the past. So what I thought I'd do this way just for something different, um, that's why I sort of said another method. Um, we know that XL equals 2 pi FL. Um, and I'm going to use the online calculator to work out what the number of turns needs to be given an inductive reactance and a frequency. So I'm going to say that XL needs to be 50 ohms, because that's the input to the mixer, times 5, so it goes out 4 to 5 times, that's, the, that, you know, that's sort of our minimum, equals 250. So, using an FT37-43, at 3.5 megahertz, if I want an inductive reactance of that, I need to have a turns of 5.7. Well, you can't have 5.7 turns, so let's crank that up to 6. So I need to have a minimum of 6 turns in order to meet that criteria of at least 250 ohms inductive reactance at 3.5 megahertz. So if, I, uh, if that's then 6, and we see that our turns ratio needs to be 2, 6 times 2 equals 12 nice numbers. So funny old thing, uh, that's what we've used in the past. Okay, so having said all that, um, just for interest sake, uh, that's the uh, the LT Spice that I uh, typically use just to, um, I guess, to play around and, and to validate at least in simulation uh, what the um, circuit's going to do before committing it to, um, to solder, so to speak. So, and the good thing is, um, it's, 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 in terms of what I'm seeing here and what I'm seeing on the scope, um, there's a very, very close correlation, which is great. I have interest a couple of things. Um, I'm now using for the coupling uh, factor for the transformer 0.99. Uh, in the past, for, you know, for quite a while actually, I was using one. Well, that's just unrealistic. You don't have um, a coupling factor, I think it's factor, is it? Um, or coefficient, it might be, co might be coefficient, uh, of, of 1. That's a little bit unrealistic. So I've been using 0.99 and, and certainly the results seem to be a lot closer uh, to what's actually happening in reality. Uh, down here you can see there the 4.7 ohms, the unbypassed portion of the emitter resistor, and then that 56 ohm which is bypassed with a, with a 100 nanofarad um, capacitor there. I think I didn't mention either. The, the input uh, capacitor is also 100 nanofarads. Uh, we need that because we don't want that 1.9 volts that's sitting here being shorted to earth through that winding of that transformer. So we need that uh, capacitor there to be a DC isolation to block that. Um, and 100 nanofarads is nice. Uh, at our frequency of operation, it's, it's looking like a dead short to, um, to AC. Right, here, and we can see there that um, with uh, 100 millivolts uh, peak to peak going in we're getting that sort of uh, just on two volts um, peak to peak coming out rightio so switching our focus across to uh, to here um, so just down the bottom here we've got the actual amplifier all wired up um, we can see there on the left hand side uh, through the yellow wire there is our input coming from the sig gen we've got our VCC hanging off there uh, and then on the right hand side we've got our 51 uh, ohm resistor acting as our load on the output of that um, uh, 6 to 12 turn transformer acting as our load and then the, um, the oscilloscope hanging off that. So just switching our focus then or attention to the, uh, the O-scope. Uh, what I have there at the moment, you can't read this, so it's not uh, that important. Um, sorry, a bit of a bad reflection off the window, but never mind. Uh, frequency is set to 7 megahertz, uh, amplitude is 100 millivolts peak to peak. Um, and as we're seeing over here, we're getting, as we saw in the simulation, 2.08 uh, volts uh, peak to peak. So um, matching up very nicely with what we're seeing on the simulation. Uh, if I was to crank up that amplitude uh, to 1 volt uh, peak to peak, then we're certainly now um, getting into a uh, distortion area, uh, not expecting to see a hundred, uh, one volt uh, peak to peak um, on the antenna. 
well not normally I hope uh, and if I was to do the same thing up here let me just uh, throw that in uh, right click so 100 milli volts uh, 1 volt is the same as 0.5 volts peak and to re-simulate that and we get exactly the same so um, it's good to see that the, you know, the simulation is certainly uh, aligning nicely with uh, with what we're seeing in the actual testing itself and then bring that back down to 100 uh, let's go back 100 millivolts peak to peak right so uh, in terms of uh, that's it uh, right 7 megahertz so back to frequency and if I start to drop that down now to uh, say uh, 3 megs so that's at the it's, it's in fact lower than the um, than the bottom of the 80 meter band uh, we're getting 2.58 or 2.6 volts peak to peak and then back up to like I say 7 and then to 8 so 1.92 you know, 2.08 so we're getting there a good sort of uh, 25 26 odd uh, DB of gain so um, I'm, I'm happy to live with that uh, I don't want to have too much gain um, I want to uh, prevent sort of uh, overloading so that's uh, why we've got or well, according to SSDRA why we've got that reasonably high uh, collector current that quiescent current is to uh, allow the don amp range to be a bit higher uh, and I don't want to have too much amplification because at the front end of the receiver um, I'm amplifying both the signal and also the noise um, so that's going to be a starting point from for moving forward uh, and if I find that there's a need to uh, reduce that gain some more then I'll probably look to play around with that emitter bypass resistor and then uh, rerun the internal um, RN calculations to see what changes need to be made to that input uh, transformer uh, so that's probably about all um, what I might do very quickly is just do a quick zoom up on I've been asked about the scope um, so I'm basically finished now so feel free to uh, to, to turn off the uh, the video but this is the scope I'm using here the Siglent oops, sorry sorry uh, the Siglent SDS one two zero two X E, uh, two hundred meg scope. Um, it's a nice, happy medium in terms of functionality uh, and cost, or quality and cost, I guess. Um, it doesn't break the back too much, but it certainly for me works well. And then for the uh, the Siggen, uh, again I've gone for a Siglent, and this is the SDG ten thirty two X. And as we've seen in the past, again. Not you know, it doesn't break the bank, and um, I've been really happy with it. Actually, it's worked well. I'm quite happy with the the functionality of the HMI. It seems to work well. Um, it's got a counter built in. I, I, I do note that some of the field tech cheaper. Um, the one I had up here, the cheaper ones also have the same sort of functionality. Uh, but this one here just seems to be quite robust, and and uh, like I say, uh, I'm I'm happy with it and with the sweet functions and. Being able to have, as we saw with the mixer, uh, RF coming out of output number one and AF or audio frequencies coming out of two, and then being able to sweep either one uh, was on both, in fact, at the same time um, was certainly very nice. Okay, right, I am done here. So uh, next steps will be to uh, get the board out, which is hiding over the back there, um, and start uh, nailing it all together, so to speak. Um, get the um, get the the copper board down, the VCC rail at the back, uh, get the VFO all sorted out and wired up, and um, we will have the receiver up and running, uh, and then can shift focus towards uh, the transmit side. So getting the microphone amplifier up and running, uh, producing that low power double sideband signal, confirming its reception, and then we can look to boost that up um, through the power amplifier. Okay, 73 is all. Sorry this is a long video again, but hopefully it was of some use to somebody. Um, and I will see you next time. Cheers all.